Hello once again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you're welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers, you're very welcome. Please check the three dots menu at the top or look along the bottom row until you see a cog icon. Click that, click the word quality and then upgrade the quality of the video to 720p or 1080p so that you have a good clear picture to work with. Pause the video for a second and just glance down in the description box to see what today's video is about. You'll also find the URL for the prophetic blog that I run for the Lord. It's called The Master's Voice. And on that blog, I have listed all the end times prophecies that the Lord Jesus Christ has given me since the year 2012 and continues to give me even now in 2021. Right now, I am in a series called the America series. This has been going on for a few months. And this series is basically me reading out the prophetic words of the Lord that covers political information. It covers mm, secrets. It covers prophetic words that the Lord is giving directly to the United States. And today, the prophecy is going to be graphic. Brothers and sisters, by now, if you are, if you've been watching the videos for even a week or so, you have a feel for the kind of prophecies that the Lord Jesus Christ gives me. The heart of God is not this candy fluff that is constantly being taught to us and shown to us in mainstream Christian media and mainstream what I call grandstand Christianity. Nothing against those things, if they're um, those those platforms, if they're preaching the truth, if they're giving the true prophetic word of the Lord. But brothers and sisters, what I am seeing and what I have experienced in very many years of Christianity, especially since the Lord began to speak to me strongly on a global scale for um, prophecy in 2012, what I am seeing is that there is a massive disconnect between the things that God is actually saying, the feelings that God actually has, the outlook and the perspectives that the Lord really has, and what we're being told by leaders and other widely promoted platforms. There is a disconnect between what Jesus is really saying to the nations, what Jesus is really warning about, how Jesus is really expecting his church to get ready and prepare in these end times for his return. This is not a place where I'm saying that Jesus is coming next Tuesday. The Lord has never said that to me. In fact, on the contrary, if you pay attention to the prophetic words on the master's voice, you may notice a trend, especially if you are someone who reads the blog. You may have noticed by now that the dreams and the visions and the signs that the Lord shows me shows that Jesus will be coming at a time unexpected to many believers. I see it all the time on social media. Look up, look up. Brothers and sisters, I'm just here to tell you as celestial, if you're not looking up for Delta 007 flight 11J2, I don't know what you're looking up with. Jesus is expecting us to strengthen ourselves. Jesus is expecting us to get dug in like ticks and fleas because it is going to get rough. It is going to get dangerous. It is going to get deadly. I said on one of my videos that as the Lord moves me, I may make a video speaking and teaching about the fact that death will meet us before the Lord comes. Apostle Paul said this, I think it's in 2 Thessalonians 5, when he says, we who are alive and remain. Brothers and sisters, when you read the Bible, you need to pay close attention to phraseology. When someone uses the words alive and remain together, they don't need to come out and tell you that in order for some to be still alive and remaining, it means that there was a larger number and part of that number has died and departed. They are no longer alive. They are no longer remaining. They have gone to be with the Lord in another way. But Christianity is not teaching us that. Christianity is not teaching us to be stoic. 
Stoic means that you're strengthened and you're strong and not just strengthened and strong like working out at the gym, strengthened and strong. Stoicism speaks to being able to bear things. It speaks to being able to endure hard things. The majority of the church is not being taught this. They're being taught that the rapture is next Friday at the latest. They're being taught that even if, they, even if they're wise and they store food, they're not going to eat that food. I've said in my blog post, not only would you, will you eat the food that you stored, you will wish that you had stored more. We're being taught that only soft things will come to us. We're being taught that Jesus is so reckless love that he will never allow us to endure anything painful. He will be here to snatch us before anything happens. This is not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches wisdom. It teaches endurance. It says, hide yourselves from the indignation for a little while. Brothers and sisters, indignation doesn't mean, oh, someone is mildly upset. When the Bible says the indignation, it is talking about very hard, swirling, whirlwind, spin cycle situations that can cause the human heart to faint and even to break. Jesus says that people's hearts will fail them, fail them for the things that will come upon the earth in the end. Does this sound like a church who will not see anything that causes them palpitations? Please, on this channel, it's not my opinion. Yes, I'm a human being like everybody else, quite a cheery person most of the time, but there is no imagination under God's sun that can conceive of the things that I am sharing here. We are going on 280 prophecies on the master's voice, prophecies that cover things across all different types of ranges, themes in different countries that I've never been to, things happening underground, things happening in the paranormal, things happening in the heavens, in the angelic realm. I am not capable of coming up of a large gamut of information like this on my own. The Lord is speaking here. And if you come to this channel and you find that the things you hear here are contrary to mainstream Christianity. Here's a thought. Instead of always asking me, why am I seeing these things that are different from mainstream Christianity? It might be time to question why mainstream Christianity is not telling you these things at the hour that you need to know them. This is a grave prophecy. I'm going to read everything. If the video is long, bear with me. It's graphic and it's painful and it's about America's dirty secrets. The banner scripture is this, for there is nothing hidden that will not be disclosed and there is nothing concealed that will not be known or brought out into the open. Luke chapter eight and verse 17. The title of this prophecy is redacted information revealed. And I received this almost a year ago. We're going on that June the 8th, 2020. This is a two-part prophecy, so if I have time, I'll do part two, but today, part one. So I was sharing in the blog post that God had started giving me, giving me prophetic facts, and I call them prophetic facts because it's not like the Lord will come and say, thus saith the Lord, I the Lord will do this, thus saith the Lord, I the Lord will do that. Sometimes he speaks to me like that, but this time God started to drop factual things, things that actually have to do with daily life here on earth. And a lot of these things were things that I did not know, things that I found shocking, things that I actually found heartbreaking as I saw the pictures. But at the same time, the understanding came to me that there are people who know this because these things have been going on for decades. God was showing me that this these things are long-standing practices in America, things that the government lies about and hides from the American people. And what surprised me the most is that God would 
would talk about these things prophetically. These are the things that people are always mocked for and called conspiracy theorists and things like that. And I always have found that puzzling because the word conspiracy literally means an agreement between two or more persons to keep an actual event secret. The word conspiracy doesn't actually mean a false and fantasy thing. I do not know why this is put forward by the mainstream media and other people who consider themselves so smart and logical as, oh, it's a conspiracy theory. And I'm thinking a theory is a, a, a postulation or a guess at something that might be possible. Yes, but the word conspiracy is a very concrete thing. If a president and it is in office, right, or let's say in the old days when Napoleon and those guys were alive, and then you plan to kill the king and you plan together to do it like they did in the book of Esther, they planned to kill Queen Esther's husband. That wasn't a conspiracy theory. It was a fact. Big Thana and the other eunuch did plan to kill him and they kept it secret. That is what a conspiracy is. A conspiracy is a clandestine agreement between two or more people to keep a true action secret until the time. And so there are so many true actions in this nation that the leaders of this nation have been doing decade after decade, says the Lord, administration after administration, and then lying to the people and attempting to to give disinformation to the people and make them feel crazy. I think the modern term is gaslighting. Gaslighting them and telling them that something that they can see happening is not happening and that they're crazy. Boggles me. Anyway, the Lord was bringing revelation about very painful things that have happened in this nation. And I have to say that I have not revealed everything that he has giving, given me. There is one last thing that I'm still yet to put. So I was having dreams and when I woke up, God began to talk to me and tell me that the time of buried information being made public in America is now here. I don't know if it's here immediately or if we are in a long period whereby this information will start to come out. But God said that the time of hidden things is now and specifically buried information, information that was hush hush, top secret, is what will be coming out. And he said, <clears throat> excuse me, please, that this is information of the type that government agencies hold and keep secret. So his exact statement was that formerly redacted papers will be published for the public to know certain things. And one of the first things that the Lord said is that papers that were redacted that explain in detail how the popular figure in the car was killed, will be published. He said all the redactions on those documents will be removed and the information will be brought forward in, for, in full. And that will be done because it's an attempt to bring closure and to resolve sorrow and guilt that exists in America concerning the assassination of the popular figure in the car. Now, you don't even need me to say his name to know who this is. But as I was listening to the Lord in shock, the Lord says that they, the government will do this because they think that publishing the papers on how President Kennedy was killed will bring healing to America because they know that an entire generation, two generations actually, the older people and the young, even the little children that saw J.F. Kennedy Jr. stand and salute his father's coffin, they all grieved. The age of Camelot came to an end and God says that the government is thinking that if they bring forth the truth and they give disclosure on how this happened, the nation will heal, but it will have the opposite effect actually. The Lord said that Americans will be greatly enraged and they will even be in disbelief that their government does this kind of thing and has been doing it way back then. This would be the 1960s. God says that the American people will be extremely angry over the revelations concerning this particular death. And he gave me two names in association with this killing, Lyndon Johnson and George Bush Sr. Please bear in mind that I live in Brooklyn and I don't know these people. So I started to see papers. 
the Lord is speaking to me conversationally. I said that sometimes he will give me a thus saith the Lord. Many times the Lord will simply speak to me in a casual manner. And I'm writing down as he's speaking and I'm seeing pictures. So redacted papers of all kinds are going to be exposed for public consumption. And a lot of secret knowledge will come out for everyone to know about. And as he's talking, I had a vision of many papers that were being typed over backward. It was very strange. In the old days, you know, you use a typewriter and the typewriter is hitting the keys going this way. But I saw the keys going that way. I guess God was showing it in reverse. And black squares that were covering all the words were going backwards and coming off of the documents. And I saw many documents sort of thrown across the table and also passing in movie fashion in front of me. And some of the, the documents only had like a few squares. So there were like a few names blacked out and maybe dates. But then some of the, some of the documents looked like this. I hope you can see that. So they looked like that. And basically the entire thing was scribble, 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 and only a few lines visible. And I remember seeing that and thinking, but why would anyone even release a document like this in the first place? Because you can't see anything on it and everything is hidden. But the Lord said that um, truth is coming and many of the government experts who will recommend that these papers be released will make the recommendation saying, let's be transparent in an attempt to win the trust of the people. Let's do it so that they can trust us more. But God says that the public will um, have a lot of backlash and vitriol. Vitriol is extreme rage that splashes like acid as someone expresses themselves. So the Lord says, redacted information revealed huge public data dumps one after another. Long kept secrets, packs made, agreements entered into, and hidden undertakings to do evil exposed then he said the CIA, the FBI, and other long existing government agencies were formed with very wide reaching powers. Their powers do not fit the constitution. I'm reading here exactly what he said. Their powers break the law. Their powers were not subject to public oversight. Their powers were never examined by public watchdog agencies. Their powers were never submitted for examinations or for voting on by responsible government bureaus. And God said that these long time overly powerful agencies will begin to confess projects that they were working on as far back as 1950 and 1960, conducting projects without public knowledge, oversight, or consent. God says that they will confess things that they did to entire communities where they were destroying lives because they were conducting experiments to see if they could get a particular result. The Lord said they wanted to see how people would react to a certain substance if it was put into their food or water supply without their knowledge and without their consent. So please understand that the government has put things into the food supply and the water supply of entire communities to observe what would happen to those communities when their food and water supply were contaminated. He said they wanted to see what would happen to children if they were treated a certain way as opposed to other children. Or what would happen to children if their bloodstream were exposed to A or B or C substance. So your children were experimented on, things were done to them, social experiments were done to them. And I think I've read about at least one type where babies, women who had two babies, uh, they would take one baby away and tell the lady, oh, one of your twins died. And they would give her back one baby and take the other baby somewhere else and raise it. So if the woman was wealthy, they would take her surviving, her other baby and raise it with a poor family and then keep an eye on the, the rich baby and the poor baby to see would these twins still be the same? And this was happening and they were using, excuse me, please. They were using social workers to check on the separated twins. And the social workers were just pretending that they were all checking the well-being of the child 
all the time. This was an experiment. There was even in a famous situation like that with triplets. I think three guys who were in the Bronx or in Brooklyn here uh, in New York, um, they made a series out of it, or a movie, but I can't remember. The Lord says that many medical things were done to people who came to the hospital and they never ever knew that they were part of a control group or they were part of a study. The doctors who were treating them were told to monitor for this and monitor for that. And sometimes the doctors knew that this was an experiment and they went along willingly. But sometimes the Lord says that they did not know what was going on. So the Lord also said that many things have been done in the United States through vaccinations and that they will be confessed. Redacted information revealed, says the Lord. CIA, your papers will be forthcoming. They will be revealed in their full nature, even though some of the names will remain blacked out so that the responsible parties who are very old men now, those who are still living, so that these responsible parties can stay in anonymity and die in peace. Redacted information means blacked out information, hidden information, secret information, confidential information, top secret, protected info, private info, Info that is only given on a need-to-know basis, says the Lord. Highly classified, says God. But now is the time for confession, revelation, public outrage, public backlash, public shock, fear, rage in America, even tears, even joy in some instances. All this is at hand. God says everything that is done in secret will come to light. I will not leave one stone unturned. Remember, this is an actual verse from the Bible, brothers and sisters. What you hear in the chamber, speak it from the rooftops. That's what I, Celestial, am doing on this channel. What God whispers to me in this Brooklyn bedroom, I share for the world to know. This is what America does, or this is what any other nation that God tells me to speak about does. All things will be naked and revealed before the maker in heaven and earth. And here's a saying that God says over and over in the prophecies and to me personally. He says the time will come when the TV set will be a distraction in the home because it will be the star of the home. People will not be able to tear themselves away from their televisions because of the revelations. He said the news you never thought you'd see in your life will be shown on the TV and people will be glued to their seats. The television set will become a confidant and best friend. The information age is coming. So plug in and listen close, says the Spirit of the Lord. Redacted information revealed. This is the word of the Lord. I continue with what he said. Experiments and secret deals have taken place. Murders have been done. Assassinations have taken place in the United States. Coups have been mounted, says God. America has been responsible for toppling many nations into political backlash, fascism, racism, and war, international espionage and sabotage on a global scale with the United States of America at the wheel. This nation is responsible for destroying so many governments and then pretending we strongly condemn and we're angry about that coup in Nicaragua. God says the coup happened because the United States sent special ops, guerrilla soldiers, Navy SEALs, and other people into other countries to remove people from power, to assassinate presidents, to kill leaders. All of this was done so that American interests would always be at the top and these confessions will come out. The Lord says deaths and assassinations are piled on the head of American investigative bureaus. CIA is your name, he said. FBI is your name. Langley is your name. Your underground experiments are coming to light. Your secrets are being leaked. Your files are being opened and confessions will be made. You will confess what you did and the nation will roll 
like the sea. From the sheer magnitude of your confessions, America will be in disbelief at what you had the audacity to do. So understand the Lord is making a distinction between the citizens of the United States who very often are in the dark and the leaders of the United States who do things without even telling the nation what they're doing, without asking for permission. They fly overseas and do things. And sometimes the United States public does support them. Yes, our boys are going over there. We're going to set them straight. Yes, the public does support them. But a lot of the times the Lord says things are done in the dark and the nation is sitting and has absolutely no idea. I continue reading his words. He said, you hid the information. You redacted it. But I, the Lord, now unredact it. I reveal the hidden things of this earth. Is there anything made that I, the Lord God, have not made? The earth, the sea, with all her terrible things beneath, I, the Lord, have made them. I see everything and I know everything. I am all in all. I am opening the books. I am settling all accounts. No debt shall remain unpaid. I say again, no debt whether good or evil shall go unrewarded. No wickedness will be unrequited and no good deed will be unblessed. I, the Lord, am the sword of justice. I come to balance the books. Secret keepers, reveal your secrets. I command it from heaven. You on the earth, watch and it shall be so. We continue with America's secrets. Controlled substances were given to children and monitored on an ongoing basis to see how children react to narcotics and other drugs that should never be given to minors. Many died. Many suffered permanent, permanent and irreparable harm, included but not limited to brain damage and paralysis. And I think of this drug that I've seen people mention occasionally on Facebook it's called thalomynide, forgive me, I'm not sure, but this is some drug that was given to mothers years ago, and when they had their baby, the baby would have no arms and no legs, and the doctors were recommending this to pregnant women who complained of simple nausea during pregnancy, and these women would go, I think it's called thalomynide. And these women would go and take these things and later give birth to babies that had no extremities, no arms and no legs. So um, that's something to think about. Another thing, the Lord says injections and various vaccines were tried on human subjects without number. Many died because the early trial concoctions were not made at all. He said, however, other vaccines were developed on people, ones that do work well but they were developed on people without their knowledge and consent. Think of Henrietta Lacks. If you haven't read the book about Henrietta Lacks, you really need to get that book and inform yourself on what goes on in this place. Human life is expendable, says the Lord. Human life can be used up and then thrown away in pursuit of power, in pursuit of knowledge, or to gain a commercial advantage. Listen, mind control was done in America and mental slavery. Mental slavery means being programmed to do things against your will and you will do them without remembering that you did not want to do them. You will do them without remembering that you did them. If that is what the trainer or the programmer who programmed your brain if that's the result they're looking for, that you'll do it against your will or that you'll do it and not even remember that you did it, they can program your mind. The Lord said mental slavery is a form of mind control. Many, many forms of mind control have been done by the U.S. government, all with varied degrees of success. Another revelation, the use of dogs as a training tool. The Lord said, this is a fear program. This is a very painful sentence. Listen to this sentence. I underlined it. The Lord said, a dog will train a human being through fear faster 
than a human being will ever train a dog. Fear is a highly weaponized currency in America. A, a dog is a very useful tool on a human being, whether you call it man's best friend or not. A dog can kill if used properly. A dog can be desensitized, says the Lord. A dog can be very wicked. If used in the hands of the right master, if a dog is starved, if a dog is beaten, if a dog is attacked and properly trained, a dog can become a weapon. Dogs are weapons in the United States and they are used in secret protocols to train humans and put them into a state of subjective thinking. Subjective thinking is where your conscious mind will do anything you are told because fear has been programmed into you as a trigger. So this dog is used to torture you to the point that you develop a separate brain that can be given instructions. And if that brain is asleep, anytime the dog is brought near you, that brain wakes up and responds to the fear that the dog causes and that part of your brain will do whatever it is told. Even if your upper brain, your conscious brain is saying, I'm not going to assassinate someone. I'm not going to poison someone's food and water. When that dog is brought, when you even see the image of a dog, if the sound of a bark is played for you, you will do whatever you're told like a good little bunny because you have been subject to a fear training protocol using weaponized dogs. And so God says the dog becomes a trigger and will bring about any desired outcome from the subject, the one who's been trained, that the trainers want. He says the use of the dog can make an adult go into the state of a small child, into a shivering, weeping, and easily controlled state. A dog is a weapon. The Lord says that medical research was done on people without consent and in many cases without their knowledge, especially on African-American communities and on other communities of a certain demographic, people who did not have much education, people who were very poor, people who did not have access to better health care. He said that many of these people could not read their forms when they came to the hospital. This is God giving me this information. I was not born. I was not there. Many of them could not read their forms and they signed with X's. They signed things that they did not know would give access to their organs and different types of body matter and body fluids without their knowledge of cons or consent. He even said the babies of these people, these communities, were tampered with in the womb to see what the effect would be on the fetus after birth. He said there was unknown testing done on these people so that the subject, meaning these communities, could then be monitored over a series of hospital visits. And then the data would be unknowingly mined from them, captured, checked up on, compiled, and studied without them ever knowing. <sighs> Electroshock therapy. Electroshock therapy was administered to the gen genitals and the other sensitive areas of living adults, including on the tongue, in the ears, and on the earlobes. Naked people were covered with water and electrocuted. So I did see a man with uh with clamps put on his privates and i saw a picture of a tongue with something that looked like a jumper jumper cable you know a jumper jumper cable clamp that you put on the battery i saw a clamp was put on someone's tongue and then uh electricity was pulsed through that and the person and then i saw that they put clamps on people's ears and then power was pulsed. And then I just saw a really quick picture of a naked person standing in a place that looked like a bathroom. So a lot of these visions I've had, I see people standing in rooms that can be washed down. So the walls have tiles. It's always this weird 
aquamarine light bluish tile sometimes white tile or green tile but they always have these people in these rooms where if the people bleed or vomit or whatever you can always come in with a hose and wash it down and so they don't keep these people in rooms that have normal walls with paint so i saw a man standing there and he was naked and then there was just this quick flash of it's like someone threw a whole bucket of water on him and then one of those jumper cables was dropped on the floor where there was water and then electricity was put on and literally the man just danced to death through that. I did say it is a graphic prophecy. Strobe lighting was used, says the Lord. Strobes. This causes mental Ill illness and degeneration. This causes split personality. It makes a person scream if it's done correctly. They hold their head and they scream and scream and scream and it can make them go crazy. Strobes can make a person unable to sleep if the light in their room is set to the strobe frequency. They cannot sleep. They cannot rest. They become jittery, unstable, and eventually hysterical. Strobe lighting was used to make people confess. It is still used in America today and it is very effective. And so I saw a person in a dark room and um, there, were, there were lights that could flip and turn and move, just like the lights they use at these rave parties for young people. And these lights had been on for several days and there was very loud rock music playing and the person was bald. They had shaved their head bald and they were wearing something that looked like blue pajamas and they were holding their head and they were screaming and screaming and they had tears flooding down their cheeks. But that person I could see had been in that situation for several days and I also had the understanding watching the scene that there was no intention of the people who were running that facility of coming to turn off that noise and those lights and that music from that person for several more days. The Lord says that instruments of torture were used. It does not need explanation, celestial. Torture is, a, is as old as the sun. Anything can be used to torture a person, including rape and sexual molestation. Torture is effective on children and adults, especially sexual torture. Sexual abuse will work on anyone, and it is the most effective breaker of human beings that there is. All this is in their files. Waterboarding was done to an excessive level. Waterboarding causes choking, vomiting, and death. This instrument of torture is a favorite of America, and they condone it because they think it is a suitable punishment for their enemies. Surprise, surprise, says the Lord. Waterboarding is used and used on you, the citizens of the U.S., says the Lord. Waterboarding makes you vomit and feel like you are dying. You vomit and then you sit in your vomit and then they leave you until it is time for more. That is all. And I saw people sitting in stripy white pajamas and the entire front of their clothing was dried with vomit. They were all shaved. And they were very tired. These people were very tired. And some of them, I could feel what was in their heart. And they were wishing that they could die. Um, and so I saw next, people's private parts were removed to see how long they could live without genitals. This was mostly done to male. And I saw a picture of a dead man who was on like a hospital gurney and he was lying there and there was a big red hole where his privates should be. The Lord also said exsanguination was practiced. Exsanguination is where you cut off digits, toes and fingers. You move them systematically one by one, just like the mafia does, cutting off one finger at a time. God said that this was done to study. A lot of this I had to go in and Google. So uh, you, you can do the same, please. God says that they cut off fingers and toes one by one to study something called toxic shock syndrome on the body. So this is where your, uh, your fingers and toes are cut off one by one and they are watching and checking very scientifically how long it takes a person to bleed to death when one finger is missing two, 
three, four. Will a person live if five fingers are missing from one hand? Can they bleed out and die? How many hours does that take? How long before they go into toxic shock syndrome? That is what they were doing. The last thing he said is that many informants in America have been killed. The whistleblowers, the truth tellers, the people who get fed up being a part of this thing or people who get fed up when they're investigating and they find out things and they break the story and then three months later they're dead. God says that these people are very much hated in America, Snowden, and they're treated as enemies of the state, Snowden. They are sacrificed and hunted down. They are excluded from their former workplaces. They are no longer treated as equals and colleagues. They undergo a disinformation program whereby the places that they used to work begin to talk about them as if they're crazy. These people might get framed. They try to make them look like they have drinking habits or drug habits, or they try to kill them and make it look like suicide. And God says they do all this to muzzle them, to silence them so that no one will believe their stories. The Lord says these people endure great pain and hardship before they die because they have to go through extreme ridicule and harassment. These are the people that are called conspiracy theorists. And anyone who tries to believe the stories that they tell, these things that I, Celestial, who haven't seen them with my eyes, but I've seen them spiritually through the visions of the Lord. Whoever tries to believe these things is also called a conspiracy theorist. God says they go through extreme harassment. They are at great risk of harm. They are monitored. They are followed and they are threatened constantly. Some of them are put in jail on false charges and some of them are killed right away. The Lord says they die bitter and angry, overlooked and disbelieved by the public. Nobody believes them at the time they reveal the truth. However, when redacted information is revealed, it will vindicate them and their reward is with the Lord. This is the end of the prophetic revelation that I received from God. So please look in the URL below, go to the blog and read these prophecies for yourself. Reading will cement them in your mind. Reading will give you the ability to go to God and say, God, I have heard these things. She claims they are from you. Give me understanding. This is what a Christian should do. When you hear things, you don't come to the comment section and start acting rude like some of you do, which I really don't have your time. You take something to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, divulge to me by the Spirit. Is this of you or is this just another passing phase or fluff in the wind? God will make himself known if you are truly seeking truth. But I, Celestial, have been called by the Lord to speak Firstly, to the nation of America, the words that God has to say to her, and God is saying in this prophecy, your dirty laundry will be confessed. Your redacted information will be revealed. He, the Lord, will make it so. And to all watchers, watch, and it will be so. Thank you for being with this channel. I appreciate your visit. I appreciate your shares. I appreciate if you subscribe. I appreciate your material support. God bless you. And I'll be back with another video when I can. But until then, bye.